and welcome along to Tuesday Chat, um, my weekly Facebook Live, um, where we usually talk everything art. Um, whereas today I think I was going to do a little drawing demo, um, something a bit of fun. So make sure you let me know if you can hear me. I've got my um, computer on over there because I'm on my phone. And I always struggle to see comments on my phone. Um, my little damage I did to myself is getting better, so that's all good. But yeah, if you're watching, let me know. Um, post a comment. Or just let me know you can hear me okay. I do have actually... Um, I've got a microphone in and I think it could be facing the wrong way. But it'll work once I um, move the camera. So just bear with me. Um, just bear with me while I check over here for comments. Um, okay. Let me know if you can hear me. Like I said, I've got a microphone in, but it's facing the opposite way. Um, once I spin this camera and move it up, hopefully that microphone will be in a better position. So, I just thought it might break, it might cut out some of the background noise if I have a microphone in. All right, so, um, drawing today is a cat's eye. I'm gonna, I feel like you really can't hear me, but anyway. Um, I've just posted in my Facebook on my Facebook page um, this little worksheet okay so I've got the cat's eye here this is the photo um, from it was a free reference photo from Pixabay or somewhere um, just hold on hi Jeanette hopefully you can hear me okay let me know um, so yeah so I've posted this is just pinned to the top of my Facebook page so I don't expect you to quickly go and get it right now um, but if you want to follow along with this later the recording will be on in the Facebook group so um, just yeah um, print it out and have a go at it now I did this blue cat's eye at our at my art retreat in Tasmania in March with with the ladies there it was one of the little demo, demonstration things we did before we sort of got started in our main drawing, just sort of a bit of a warm up, give them an idea of how um, pastel matte works, all that sort of stuff. Um, so rather than do it blue again, I thought I would try it in pink, something a bit different, see how it goes. <laughs> but so I've got the color version there, but I've also got the grayscale because really you can change to any color you want. Um, if you just keep an eye on your values, okay, rather, it doesn't have to be blue, it can be anything. And then there's just a little line art there that you can transfer that onto your drawing paper. So that little printout is in, is pinned at the top of this page. Uh, if you're watching on my main Facebook page, Kez Art or Kerry Dixon Art, that's where it's pinned, but I will go into the groups. If you're watching from one of the groups, I'll go in and post that in there later. Um, oh, sound is good also. Awesome. I can hear you very damn clear. Oh, that's really good because uh, the microphone is facing the other direction. <laughs> so that works out great. Okay. So I will spin this and you'll be able to see the blue one I did. Hold on. I've got to try and figure out this thing. There you go. Up. Okay, so you can see there the blue eye. So this one here, of course, is the blue eye we did as a demo piece at the art retreat. And while I mention art retreat, I do have spaces available if you want to join me next March in Tasmania. It is absolutely beautiful. And Jillian's our host and she looks after us so well. So um, if it is something you're thinking you wouldn't mind coming along to, then again, pinned in the top of my main Facebook page is the link to go and see all about that. And you've got, you only need a $200 deposit and you've got till um, 
uh, the end of the year, like start of next year to pay it off. So if it is something you want to do, it's definitely a good way to start saving for it now. So, all right. So I have the line art. You don't need much line art with this one. Um, it's essentially just, you could probably freehand this without any problem. So I've just put in sort of where my um, reflections would be, the pupil and just a basic outline of the cat. Hold on. Um, well, I'm just going to have to keep flicking back. If you have any comments or anything or any questions, just let me know. Um, the other thing I liked about this one is black fur is quite easy to do. All you need to do is block it in black and add a few lighter strokes. So, <laughs> so that's um, <clears throat> that's why I like this one as well. All right, so I need some glasses on. Find those. All right, but we won't bother with all the black fur bit. We'll leave that till last because it's going to get a bit messy. So firstly, um, I didn't think to sharpen my black, hold on. So if you're um, only fairly new to pastels, um, I would probably stick with the blue eye to start with because you've got a picture of it here on this little printout. Okay, and you can follow it along better. But if you've um, done stuff, like a lot of the ladies in my membership are quite capable of changing the colours up, so it would be a good good test for them, I think, to have a go at a different colour. I just really want to make sure I'm not going to... I'm worried my phone's going to flick out from here. Hopefully the lighting's not too bad. But... Um, I wonder if I could zoom in a little bit on this one. There we go, that might be a bit better. Okay, I feel like the bottom half is very dark for some reason, anyway. Okay, so the first thing I do whenever I'm drawing an eye or something is I always look for the dark area, so I usually like to get the pupil in and sometimes a little bit of the outline. Um, and I also like to block in the reflections. So, why, yep. so I'm just working on a bit of light gray pastel matte, but you could essentially do this on any, any colored pastel matte if you wanted, or even on a sanded paper, but I like to just Get a bit of white down on those reflections, just so I don't lose them. Um, in the end, they'll have pinks and stuff on top of them, but um, it's more just so I don't don't go over them with black or something crazy. Because if I get black on them, then it's going to be really hard to get that back out. Okay, so I'm just gonna. Start to just lightly block in some black on that pupil. You can come back over. Up the top here it is very dark but it's not really black. It's more of um sort of if I'm gonna if I was doing it blue it'd be a very dark blue but um because I'm doing it pink it's gonna end up being a dark pink. Just gonna get a bit of an outline happening here. So just lightly okay, so that's what I was saying you could essentially just sort of sketch this in uh, you will end up getting that nice and black in there but for now I'll just leave it like that okay so next I like to pick a mid-tone um, so again if you were if you were doing the blue one I'd probably block in with this sort of middle blue here. Then you can go lighter and darker. So I'm going to pick a pink. <laughs> I really don't, they don't really match that well. They're more reds actually. These are my Carbothellos. So I just kind of grabbed, 
just grabbed some. So I've got these. They're more like reds and oranges. But I might go with this pink here. So I'm going to block the whole thing in. Now I always like as well to try and do my strokes leading up towards the pupil. So I sort of rotate a bit like a clock. <laughs> that way I find it works with, um, in the iris, there always seems to be lines heading towards the pupil. And that way if you sort of do your blocking in this way, then it doesn't matter if you don't get it perfectly smooth, some of these sort of lines will show up and it looks pretty good. I don't do the whole lot, avoiding those reflected areas. Don't stress if you got a little bit on there. This is going to be pretty fun, isn't it? You could do yellow, orange, purple, whatever, whatever your favourite colour is, I suppose. Okay, now you can see, I can still see that paper shining through. I haven't done a heavy layer, it's just light. Um, just let me check comments again. Okay, cool. Alright, um, so now, what do I want? Let's try and go a bit darker. So, I've got, what have I got? The only dark I've got Just sort of trying to check out what I've got in the way of dark. I could probably mix a dark brown. I've got this dark burgundy colour, dark brown there. Right, let's try and bring a bit of dark in over the top. So, so that pink I was using for the base is 365 and this one is 330. So if you've got Carbothellos. So I'm just sort of trying to look at where it's a lot darker. And it comes. Right down through to here, sort of. Again, you can see, still see the paper through. I'm not, I'm just slowly building this up. And it's quite dark in there. Where else is it dark? It's kind of dark all the way around, isn't it? Well, you guys can't see my reference image. <laughs> um... I'm just trying to think if I can put something up there. Maybe you can see it. Hopefully this won't ruin the um hope it doesn't make my picture go blurry by having this here. Let me just rip it out. sort of see it okay might be better so better understanding what I'm doing so then he's kind of dark in here it's kind of like a line hasn't he? he sort of comes along not like that and then another one comes up through there a bit like that so oh, and then this 
few lines from there. I find that is when you're doing a lot of eyes, you do find that that is fairly common, that they sometimes have those lines through them. Okay, let's see, where is it a bit lighter now? Um, got this darker brown, I could probably bring that in too, but we'll, we won't get too carried away just yet. Um, I did grab a light pink, I was thinking it would be nice to to do some of the lighter areas. So this one is 681. So I'm just sort of doing the opposite now. I'm going to look at the lighter area. It's definitely way lighter along this edge, isn't it? It's a little bit, a bit dull. I'm going to bring some of that brighter pink over the top, I think. Could even probably mix some white, maybe. Put a little bit of light underneath there. What else do we have? Is this the base one? Yeah, it is. I can't remember what colour I use now. No, it was this one. Alright, maybe we could add a bit of this purple. It's pretty cool. Lightly add a bit of this purple, I quite like it. <laughs> and I'm going to bring that original pink back in. Definitely darker as it comes right up to that pupil. And the beauty with pastel mat is as we build these layers up, I haven't got to that point just yet, but it'll get to a point where it'll start blending really nicely. You can start adding a little bit of the pink on top. reflection there as well a little bit. I think I'm going to use white actually to lighten. Um, I might even add some of this brown because I do want it quite a lot darker. This is 640. Just up in this top area through here, it's really quite dark. And then it gets a bit lighter as it comes around this way. And we'll use some black and pull out some of those marks in that pupil as well. A few dark bits across the reflection. dark as well isn't it I might bring some of this one back on top So I'm just essentially building layers of colour, just blending. I keep mixing up which was what here. <laughs> and you can 
some more of the pink back into it. a touch of colour sort of at the top and bottom so we'll add a little bit of that and then it does have some darker like lines from the lashes or fur I don't know if it's so much lashes but the fur is through there okay I'm going to bring my black back in And it sort of comes out of it, doesn't it, in the pupil there. You can see there's some lines coming out, which are probably more uh, dark pink than black, but I'll just get them sort of marked in. It's, it's a bit of a blurry sort of edge to his pupil. And up here it's quite dark, so we can run a little bit of black over that just to darken it even more. But I'm just doing it lightly so that the um, pink still sort of shines through a little bit. So I haven't sort of turned it fully black. Not a fan of those. Let's soften those. They don't really look right. They're too... They look like fur strokes. <laughs> yeah. That might be a bit better. this brown and try and bring some separate lines out. I could sit here and play all day and keep adding little marks and lines. So it's up to you how long you want to spend on it. But I'm at a point I'm trying to get rid of those, uh, the paper coming through now. And we can start bringing in our light again. I think I'm going to stick with this pink actually rather than white. We'll see. Let me add a bit of white and see what happens. No, no. I think I like the white. I think it's going to blend better with the, the undercolor there. a bit of a sharper line there of that reflection I had a bit messy okay so it's the lightest area on the iris is sort of this way sort of through this area so I'm gonna kind of make that up with the white it sort of comes down through here about there, I think. And then along the edge of these lines is going to be lighter. And the 
this one as well. Just along the edge of it. And then just lightly blending under here. I don't want it too white, I want it to blend. But um you can probably start to see that this is now at a point it's it's blend starting to blend. I've nearly covered all that pastel paper. This needs to be this needs to be on a like a, a curve because the balls the eyeball of course is rounded so I'll make sure I've got that a bit more curvy. But I don't want it to look like it's got a, you know, uh, outline on it. So I need to blend those lines out into the eye. You can see I'm still doing these strokes all sort of leading towards that pupil. Um, let's get our light in there again. is quite rounded as well sort of this way it does have a few little marks coming into it so that actually this is the wrong shape though it needs to be a bit more curved I think like that maybe um, okay now make sure I get this sort of blocked in I don't I'm trying not to have like heaps of paper showing through anymore so the white and that pink blends really nice to create a there's a pretty pink doesn't it Let's get some more black in a bit down the bottom here. pencils it would probably help too <laughs> I always do that I get on here and I've totally forgotten to sharpen my pencils until I start okay this is really dark up through here I think so let's get a bit more black in there Let's have this line. It has like a line here. I think I put it in earlier and I've lost it. So we might do that and just lighten behind it. That's too light. line there mm. I 
like I said, I could sit here all day and just keep playing. <laughs> Love working on eyes. Um, okay, what else do you think? I'm just looking at the blue picture up there and just sort of figuring out if I need more. I think this is too wide. I reckon we could pretty much be at the point we might bring that furring around it. I'll just double check. Um, there's no comments. Actually, we've got our white there, haven't we? Nearly lost it. Um, what we have along this edge is sort of white down there. You might not be able to see that at the moment. And then there's like, um, I think that white line is about here. So I'm just going to bring that black sort of up to it. And we'll blend it into the eyeball. And this side. Sort of comes, the shape of the eye comes down sort of to a point about there, I think. And then back around here. And it's got that white strip there. I need to carve right down because I've got it way too, way too thick. So again, a sharp pencil would help. very well did it <laughs> don't panic if you end up going over it like I just did good old white um, general's charcoal pencils pretty much saves the day all right I have got I think my lines are in the wrong spot here on the eye but that's all right. All right, I want to get the, I like to get around it done and then I can come back and finish off any, any bits, but okay. Let me just check comments. Um, original. Okay, no problem. You can put it sideways a little bit. There we go. Hold on. There we go. Hopefully you can see that better. Yep. Okay. Um, oh, it's doing a lot of flashing, isn't it? Hope. Sorry if that took me forever to do that. <laughs> Better late than never, hey? Okay. <laughs> Alright, so now I will just get um, the black around. So I'm just going to use a black stick. Okay, and this is kind of the beauty of black fur. Whoop. I forgot there's white there too. Oh well. Not to worry. 
Hmm, I'm just gonna... Actually, I need a sponge tool, don't I? Anything with pastel mat, you sort of... Um, it doesn't really like to blend that well, unless I'm using a sponge tool. There's one here. Lucky I sort of have them all over the place. Again, it's just a matter of building up layers. This is pretty black right up against the eye. Okay, that'll do for the stick. Um, so now I've got, I'm going to grab um, I'm going to use a general's charcoal here. And then through here It's white there, but it's black on this side. Oh my god, I need sharp black. I feel like mine needs to be a bit rounder there. I want to bring some pink back in and extend this eyeball down a little bit. how it goes <coughs> okay so that's sort of the shape around like that going to soften that edge a little bit there where it meets the black okay and then this line here the white is nowhere near that bright so we're going to cut it with our black so it sort of has a cut through there and there's like another little bit there sort of fades off down here a bit. Okay. Well, this one here is really quite bright. It does sort of go skinnier as it comes through here, I think. Oh, I can't get it. So 
never um, anything like in nature or for realistic stuff. You want it, you don't want anything to really be perfect, I suppose. Like perfectly straight lines. There's always like bits of the curve and stuff to them, I suppose. Alright, I want to go along this edge is black, so let's get that in. totally cover this it's a bit lighter through there okay now we can use our greys maybe I've got a um what is this one 720 first of all I can see a very pale line through here I'm going to just try and get that in. I think it's like the top of the eyelid maybe. It just fades out there. I think that's where it goes. And then along this edge here is a bit lighter. But we can start to bring in um, some first strokes. So you don't need many just wherever you sort of see. See, I can see it's, there's a few strokes here because that's where it would be sitting further out probably. On a, any black animal, you only sort of see the strokes where the light's hitting it. So there's sort of only going to be the areas that stick out a bit more, I suppose. Um, so again, just a light pressure. If I want a few a bit, a bit more um, noticeable, I can just put a bit more pressure. But I don't think I'd want to use anything lighter than this um, grey I'm using, which is 720. And then up through here, it's a bit lighter. Sort of, it's not right against that white. It is a bit more up the top, but as it comes down, it's sort of there's a bit of a black area there. So we'll just do a bit of that. <laughs> um, and then I feel like it's a little bit lighter just there, maybe. And then of course here I can see some and I'm looking at fur direction and length everyone in my membership is probably sick of hearing me say that it's like a broken record <laughs> fur direction and fur length so you can see down the bottom here they're really quite short and they're going sort of in all different directions as they come up onto the nose but we're just giving it a hint of a fur like we don't need a million strokes in there it's just to give the idea that there's fur on this cat and you could put a, just a few other light random ones in they all come up and start to go around okay um, and then down here again it's a bit lighter through there which is good then up through here again this would be where the cheekbone starts to come out so that's why you notice this more again the light would be hitting it so just gonna do a few little first strokes up through there and you can just do one or two sort of through here if you want 
like I said, it's not really needed in the, the really dark areas on a black animal. You just leave, you can leave black. It's good. Sometimes I, in um, the pupil of the eye, rather than it being just completely black, I usually like to add some blue or something of the sky. So you could always add. I don't know, I just find black seems completely flat. So we could put a few little touches of the red in maybe, rather than blue. Just something so it's not just solid, whoop, <laughs> solid black. Um, all right, so now I've done the surround, I can start to sit back and, and look at whether there's things that need changing. So I might want to go a bit darker maybe in some areas here. But in general, I think it actually doesn't look too bad. But And then, like I said, the, the pastel paper is at a point that you can just do tiny little alterations and glazes and blends, things like that. And, um, That's why I love pastel mat because you can just keep building layers. You see how many layers I've put on here with these pinks just going back and forth and it's still just taking it. I should um, get commission from Claire Fontaine pastel mat, shouldn't I? And then I go on about it. <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to call that done. Now let me check the comments. All right, I, I'm sort of sitting back looking at it thinking it looks pretty, pretty good. I'm happy with that. But could you see how, um, let me just zoom out a little bit so I can see them both side by side. I need a new mount for my camera. Okay. So, can you see how you can just do... Um, you don't have to follow a reference image. You can change things up. Your most important thing is if you do want to do a different colour of something, is print out a grayscale version of it. So, you can just see your values. So, all I've done is essentially just gone all right this is dark in this area so I need a darker pink rather than a darker blue and you can refer to the blue and go all right that's a mid blue but and again it's probably less confusing actually if you just look at the gray one and then um, just go right mid pink or mid whatever color you're working on um, yeah and so I think to start with if you're a beginner definitely just stick with with the reference but for pretty much all my members that are watching, <laughs> I think all of you guys are quite capable to change it up a bit. And just um, have some fun and it, it's a good little test for you. It really makes you start to, um, to look at uh, values, which of course is the most important thing. Let me um, try and hold on. I will take this back to me. So let me take this off of here. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. Sorry, I'm gonna move around here um, just so I can check comments. All right. So let me know if you have any any questions or anything. Like I said, the um, uh, if you missed the start, I have. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm just trying to. Um, I don't know if you can hear me again now. <laughs> anyway, um, so I have the worksheet. I've pinned it to the top of my main Facebook page, um, Kerry Dixon Art. In the Drawing Wildlife and Nature, it depends where you're watching me from, I will get it pinned in there. So it is, it's just got the line art and the, two, the reference image in the colour and the grayscale. 
So if you want to have a go at that yourself, this record this recording will be on my Facebook page and in the group. I won't delete it at all. So you can maybe print that out and follow along with me. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, I love the pink version too, Diane. That's pretty cool. Hey. But yeah, even um, I'd love to see some other colours. So if anyone does give it a go that's not a complete beginner, then um, definitely try, what, pick your favourite colour maybe. I don't know whether that's purple, green, pink, um, yellow, orange, whatever, it would be pretty cool. You could even try a bit of a rainbow maybe. That's really getting out there. <laughs> so anyway, I hope um, you enjoyed this Tuesday chat. Um, instead of a chat, I did the little uh, draw along thing. So um, drawing demo, I mean. So anyway, all right. Um, thanks for joining me. I'll let you go. Oh, purple would be fun, yes. And um, I'll see everyone next Tuesday for my members. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys tomorrow um, with our creative play session. Um, the other thing I wanted to also mention, don't forget, yes, my Tassie Art Retreat next March. Um, there's still spots available. That, again, is pinned to the top of the page. Um, and I've got really exciting news. Uh, the Creative Barn membership doors are opening next month and I'm doing another coaching week to, um, to celebrate. So uh, everyone loves coaching week, so stay tuned because I will have more of, about that and dates and everything over the next couple of weeks. So, all right, thanks for joining me, guys, and I will see you all soon. Bye.